of God's Word. I'd like to say also, I meant to mention it a while ago, it's good to have Sister Amy's family with, with us this morning. Um, no, praise the Lord, that's great. Praise God. We want people to feel welcome here, don't we? Second Chronicles 6 and 7. And then we'll be reading from the book of Haggai chapter 2. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, for as much as it was in thine heart to build a house for my name, thou didst well, in that it was in thy heart. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son which shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house for my name. The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he has spoken, for I have risen up in the room of David my father and am set on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. Turn with me now to Haggai chapter 2, verse 1. Help us, Jesus. Haggai chapter 2 and verse 1. In the seventh month, in the one, one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shetail, the governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of as it is nothing? Verse 4, Now, yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I coveted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with my glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Silver is mine, the gold and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Could you pray and ask the Lord to help me today? Father, Lord, I believe you laid this on my heart. God, I pray that you would help us, God, who preach this word to your church, your people. Lord, should there be a sinner in in the midst today, somebody that's not saved, deal with them and draw them to an altar of prayer, Lord, to find grace and salvation. Lord, encourage the church, challenge the church, stir the church. Lord, we want to do your will. We want to be pleasing in your sight. And Lord, let your glory fill this house. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. You can be seated. I guess this is somewhat Dedication Sunday and um, our actual first official Sunday in the new church. And and I was praying about what to preach and this had come to me. But our text here that I've read to you from Chronicles and from Haggai came from two totally different eras in, in biblical history. In 1 Chronicles chapter number six, it was a time in which Solomon, the son of David, had built the temple, the most magnificent house of worship in the known world at that time. Until that time, they had worshiped the Lord in the tabernacle, the tent, a tent made of skins, of animal skins. But the day came that God would have them build a temple. And so they did. Now in the book of Haggai, we were reading of a time when they were rebuilding the temple. The temple, which was called Solomon's temple, uh, had been destroyed because of the sins of Israel. And um, 
And when they started rebuilding the temple, some of the folks that had seen the, the temple in its former state and its former beauty began to weep and began to cry as they thought about this new one and felt like it might be inferior in ways to the old. What I want to preach about is a time of transition this morning, just for a little bit, time of transition. Both of these scriptures speak of a time of transition. And with each transition, I'm sure there were feelings of excitement, there were feelings of anticipation for something new, while at the same time, there were sentimental feelings of sadness for what they were leaving behind for the old. Now, I wonder, and it's just my thoughts here, and you think on it some, but I wonder if there were those in Solomon's time that looked at that magnificent temple that Solomon had built standing next to the old tabernacle that had not yet been taken down, that old tent tabernacle. And when I say old, I do not say it in disregard or disrespect for it, but because it was many, many years old at that point. And I wonder if they, they looked at that and said, I wonder if God will visit us in the temple like he did the tabernacle. Of course, <clears throat> when Solomon made his prayer, amen, and, and the dedication and made his prayer unto God, amen, the Shekinah glory moved from the tent into the temple. Amen. And God's blessing was there. It was God's will that there be a time of transition. In Haggai's time, when the temple was rebuilt and the original temple had been destroyed, amen, those that had seen the original temple in its, its, in its state, amen, with all of its glory, looked on the new with somewhat of a skeptical eye, amen, or maybe a worrisome <clears throat> eye, and they, and they thought, wonder if God had blessed this house like he'd done the previously. Will God be able to move here like he moved there? Amen, but God himself spoke up through his prophet and said, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. Now, you know why God said that at that time? Now, this is a personal belief of mine on this. God said, amen, this because he knew there would be a day come, amen, that his only begotten son would walk into that temple that they were building right then. He didn't grace, amen, the temple of Solomon, the Shekinah glory did, but the Son of God didn't literally walk in there. But the day came in this temple that was rebuilt, amen, where the Son of God would walk into that temple physically, amen, and declare, amen, himself being there as a fulfillment of the scripture. I remember in the book of Luke where they give unto him the, the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah, and he began to read. And then he read these words, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then Jesus went on to tell them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Amen, God had a time of transition. Well, in consideration of our moving from the old sanctuary into this new one, I thought of the transition and how that I'm sure some of us probably have some mixed emotions about this, which is only natural for us to do so. In one way, we're excited, amen, about moving into this sanctuary, and we are moved. And But then again, on the other hand, there may be somewhat of a feeling of sadness about moving out of the old Amen, because we know of people that's got saved there and people that's been touched there and people that's been healed there and the power of God that's been manifested there. And, and so we may, may be feeling that way, but God, I must tell you this, God ordains times of transition. And we are in one right now. Amen, we are in one. Solomon's time was a time of transition. God proved, he approved of it by Shekinah glory. Amen, the temple being rebuilt was a time of transition. God showed, approved it, amen, by his own son visiting in that temple at the right time as God ordained it to be. So as uh, there were mixed emotions, no doubt in those days, and there, there are mixed emotions maybe yet here today. There was mixed emotions when the old tent was taken down and folded up 
and laid aside, uh, amen, but God ordained it to be so. And I thought how that, amen, in our hands right here this morning, many of you carried a Bible in the church with you, the Holy Bible, that's the one we use here, the King James Version, amen, the Holy Bible, amen, but did you know this Bible is separated into two divisions? It's separated into the Old Testament and the New Testament. Amen. The New Testament is a transition that God ordained, amen, for a time to bring men and women into the gospel of grace. The Old Testament was the dispensation of the law. The New Testament, the dispensation of grace. Amen. And God bringing it all together. The Old Testament being a schoolmaster of the things to come. The New Testament being the fulfillment of that Amen, in Christ and the doctrine of Christ. I could go on with many things like that. The Old Testament, amen, they offered up lambs and doves and heifers and goats for sacrifices for the sins of the people. But in the New Testament, there was one supreme sacrifice given for all, amen, and that was the Lamb of God. John the Baptist beheld Jesus when he stepped on the scene there at the Jordan River to be baptized. And John the Baptist declared, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He declared Jesus to be the supreme sacrifice. Christ went to the cross of Calvary and was that sacrifice. Amen. I'm glad we're living in that dispensation. Amen. That transition that God moved us into. Amen. I was thinking about how blessed we are to be able to move into this sanctuary. God's given it to us. We've labored together. We've worked together with the Lord and have accomplished it. I believe it's his will and for his glory. Amen. We've done it in faith, believing God to send in more souls and more people to be saved, to come into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now, I believe that the presence of the Lord will be just as rich at times in this place, amen, as it was and has been, amen, in the previous place. I was greatly encouraged and moved by the Lord, amen, in what we experienced on that Saturday night, and I'm referring back to that, Saturday night during our homecoming revival where the Spirit of God was poured out so mightily, amen, in our previous sanctuary, amen, that people began to move out of that sanctuary into this one, worshiping God. My sister and her husband and their family, I don't know how many laps they made back and forth across the front of this church, praying and asking for the move of God and for their family to be touched. Amen. Others were walking around. I remember Sister Cheyenne. She is laying up against the wall, leaning against the wall in the back, weeping. Amen. Tears dripping on the wall. There's a spot back there now, Sister, where you pray. Amen. And uh, there were others I could tell about that walked. And, and uh, some, Sister LaDonna, amen, started, uh, came over here and prayed and then soon was laying before the Lord in prayer. On I could go, people being touched of God. God blessed that night. Some shouted. Others looked on and just enjoyed what God was doing. Same spirit, same power, same anointing, same Lord, same grace, same goodness. Hallelujah. And I believe, uh, amen, as God moved that night, he'll keep moving. Amen. Thank the Lord. I was encouraged, amen, that on the day of our homecoming, as a, on the first song, I believe, amen, my mother moved out. She got blessed and began to walk around the building praising God. I thank God for that. Thank God my sister began to just dance between the pews. I thank God for that. Hallelujah, amen. And not only that, but the greatest thing that happened that day was sinners came to the altar after Brother Webb preached to pray and see God's face. Hallelujah, amen. So God uh, sanctioning it, God approving of it, God blessing it. You know, I, I'm like Moses this morning, Brother Joe. Amen, if he don't go, if the Lord don't go, I don't wanna go. If God says no, it's no. If God says yes, it's Yes, God said build it, we built it. Amen, God said I'll bless it and he's blessing it. So I thank him for that this morning. 
this past Friday night, we had our youth rally. I shared a little bit of that with you. God poured out his spirit. God moved. God touched lives. Uh, people praying and rejoicing around the altar. Now, I realize that we're all are going to have to do some adjusting. Amen. We will. There'll be. It may get. It may be a little hard for you to decide exactly where you're going to sit, or you may don't have your mind made up. You got your spot, and there you are. But some may have to move around a little bit before they make their nest. You know. Amen. That may just be the way it is. It may sound a little different in here than it did over there. The decor may be different. The buildings a different size. Same God. Same gospel. Same truth. Amen, same spirit. Amen. But this is what the Lord has blessed us with and we should be thankful and we should be appreciative. We don't want to demean it, degrade it, put it down. Really, uh, amen, there's no comparison. We shouldn't compare, uh, amen, uh, the previous building with this building. Uh, when I say no comparison, I'm not belittling that. Amen, it's had its place, it's had its glory, it's had its time and it's move of God. Men were worked hard to build it and men have worked hard to build this amen it was all, it's all the church and you're the church amen the church is not the room the church is the people in the room amen God put it in my heart several years ago amen to build something he sent brother Holden here and he had a vision for the same brother and sister Webb seniors had a vision for this church a long long time amen and though we may be changing rooms of worship we are not changing the message or we are not changing the way we worship we are not changing our goal because we are still involved in the great commission amen we're going to spread the gospel we're going to preach the word we're going to continue to teach and preach the same message Jesus the way Jesus the truth and Jesus the life we're going to preach salvation by grace through faith cleansing through the blood of Christ divine healing uh, through the stripes that was laid upon his back by faith, the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, the Pentecostal message, uh, holiness, the way of life. Praise God. We're going to continue to reach beyond the walls of the church, uh, amen, and share the gospel uh, not only abroad, uh, but with our own community, uh, amen, ministering uh, in the jails, uh, ministering in the nursing homes and reaching out to people that are in need of God. We're going to continue to reach out to the needs of the fatherless like we just done a few minutes ago. Receiving an offering for the orphan children and ministering to the widows that are truly widows indeed. I said all that this morning. Amen. To basically say this. We're not changing our message. We're not changing our statement. Standard. We're not changing our convictions. We're not changing our Bible. We're not changing our worship. We're not looking backward. We're looking forward. And we're going to continue to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. As the Lord has saved and filled and delivered people in the past, oh, glory be to God, he will continue to do so. As long as we give him glory, as long as we continue to give him praise and honor, as long as he is the one lifted up, men will be drawn. Amen. It's not about me. It's not about what I've done. It's about him and what he's done. Amen. And what he is doing. Amen. So this morning, that was the burden of my heart. We are in a time of transition. Amen. God's moving us on a little farther. Amen. Years ago, I remember being in the little block building. I don't remember how big it was. Probably about 24 by 36 or something like that. It wasn't very big at all. Wood slat seats, amen, uh, subflooring with no nothing on top of it, just boards on, on the floor uh, with tin lids uh, over the knot holes. And then I remember from there, uh, we went in transition and moved uh, from there to this place, amen. The men got together and built a building that was over twice as large uh, as what we had there, uh, amen. And then in 85, church growth, 
so much they added on again and here we are amen in 2012 at another transition God moved us on from the little building moved us into a bigger building extended that building and has moved us on again praise God amen it wasn't brother Webb senior that done it all or brother Doug Webb had done it all I'm telling you us by ourselves we could have not done anything but it was a help of God's people it was the help of the Lord and we have what we have and we are what we are as a church amen because of Jesus Christ hallelujah therefore we're going to remain with this we're going to stay with this we're going to hold to this we're going to uphold him glory I feel good amen and believe amen God amen's going to continue to do great and mighty things yes there may be some adjustments along the way we'll have to continue working on the room working on the sound and different things like that but the main thing is is we continue to pray we continue to seek his face that we continue to worship him and do his will glory to God and as we do amen more souls will come to Christ more miracles will be wrought amen people will be touched and the church will be helped I'm going to ask you to stand here I've preached in my heart this morning I could go longer but it would be wise I think for us to, to close thank God church I want you to pray here for a moment the first thing I want to do today in this altar call is open the altar up for anybody here this morning that's not where you need to be with God if your heart is not right with God we have a place here to pray you can kneel right up here in the front and you can ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and ask him to come into your heart and life and he can do it in a moment of time if you're willing to let go of your past Jesus is ready to give you a brand new future a brand new beginning let's pray church Father God in Jesus name we pray right here, Lord, that you would touch hearts. Lord, you'd touch lives. And Lord, if there be one person, one backslider, somebody that's never truly given their all to you, Lord, I pray, God, deal with them and draw them and let them come to you today. I know you're ready to save because you come to seek and to save that which is lost. You died on the cross. So that whosoever believeth in you should not perish, but have everlasting life. Touch him today, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. As the church continues to pray, and they begin to play something here, a little music. For somebody here today that would like to give your all to Jesus. You haven't done it yet, but you'd like to do it today. Why don't you step out of that seat and come down here and stand before the altar kneel before the altar whatever you feel you need to do but what you need to do is just invite Jesus to have his way in your life it's your choice the Lord is a gentleman he won't force his way into your heart but if you'll open up the door he'll come in if you'll say Jesus help me he'll help you Jesus forgive me he'll forgive you Jesus come live with me he'll come live with you is there one this morning? Pray, church. Is there one? Is there anybody? Jesus is knocking on your heart. Feel like you need to give your all to him. See, I'm not your judge. I don't have to judge you. You already know in your heart where you're at. Say, so, preacher, I'm not really sure I believe in God, but I can't say I've ever been born again. Well, you're going to have to be born again to go to God's heaven. Amen. You've got to just come to him and ask him to take away your sins. Repent of them. And if you do, he will. Anybody this morning, you feel the knock of Jesus upon your heart, the pull of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're tarrying for you. We're waiting for you. Anybody. Praise God. Praise God. All right. I wanted to be sure you had that opportunity, and the opportunity still stands. You still can come. But I'll tell you what I'd like for us to do, church, this morning. 
as a body of believers, as the family of God. I want you to come this morning, standing around the front, maybe ladies over here and the brothers over here, but to my brothers to my left, but our families, if you want to come together and stand as a family any way you want to do it, but I'd like for us as a body, the church body, to come together and just pray for God's blessing and God's power to be manifested in this place. Amen. Would you begin to come this way? This is your home. This is your church family. This is where you, amen, want to worship God. Come on, church. Let's bind together. Let's find you a place. Just find you a place. Amen. This is you. This is God's house. This is your.